Let us gain courage for our own battle by honoring the martyrdom of the glorious Virgin Agnes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Those words we just quoted are from an ancient hymn in honor of St. Agnes. Of all the saints, very rarely do we ever celebrate two feasts for him or her. The exception of maybe St. Francis of Assisi, because we have another feast for him, uh, for his stigmata. But very rarely, only those of the apostolic times and nothing beyond, hardly. So we have the 21st of January and the 28th of January. And St. Agnes, the 28th of January, even reaches all the way to 1962 <laughs> of celebrating a second feast. But in the 62 missiles, uh, Pope John XXIII put her as a commemoration, but it still came out. It was still... It still surfaced. What a tremendous thing. And what would it mean for us to celebrate two feasts within the Roman calendar of one single saint post-apostolic times? Well, it means everything for religious life, especially for the nuns. It means everything. And we're going to touch a little bit why the church decided to put this saint in two feasts occupying two days of her holy calendar. It's almost like the universal church was forced to put an extra feast of St. Agnes. And the reason why is because January 28th, it was, there was a private revelation eight days after St. Agnes' death, her martyrdom. And therefore, this, this private revelation was so powerful, so touching, and so meaningful that they had to put it into the universal calendar. And usually that is another rarity, is that not just do, do you only have two saints that get on, on the uh, two, two feasts get on that calendar for one saint, but very, very rarely do you have a private revelation that becomes a universal feast in the church. So it must have been so special, that revelation. So you may say, Father, tell us about this private revelation. <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to do right now. So eight days after the martyrdom of St. Agnes, her parents went to the tomb and they were praying and they were weeping over the loss of their beloved daughter. Which is very normal, right? A very natural experience. And while they were somberly thinking of her cruel death, their 13-year-old daughter endured, though it enriched the soul of their daughter with the martyrdom's palm of victory. And as they were doing this, St. Agnes appeared to them at the gravesite. And she was absolutely beautiful, stunningly beautiful. And she was all in splendid apparel, and she wore a crown on her head. And she was surrounded by many beautiful and dazzling virgins of Christ maids of honor. And on her right hand stood the beautiful white lamb that represented Christ of the apocalypse, her divine spouse. And this beautiful Saint Agnes turned to her parents and said, weep not over my death, for I now am in heaven together with these virgins, living in him whom I have loved on earth with my whole soul. What a beautiful, a beautiful message. And this is why it's so special for the nuns. Maybe when you go and you write your letter home to your parents and to your family members, make sure you tell them this. 
So y'all got to put on your calendars to go to Mass on the 28th of every January to get those very special graces because I know you miss me, especially for the younger sisters who have just left, you know. Uh, you know, your mother is having a little misty-eyed experience over there, which is very normal. But you have to remind them to go to Mass on January 28th. The whole church is trying to tell all these mothers and fathers and brothers and cousins and aunties and all these people, it's okay. Your daughter has given herself over to the church. We should rejoice not have an anxious missing of them. What a beautiful message our church wants to give us. And so therefore, the parents were overjoyed when they saw that beautiful vision of their daughter. So as we continue this holy sacrifice at a Mass, let us encourage the sisters here today Let's not skip any steps in this process. You know, don't imagine yourself already there with a big crown on your head. Yet, let us roll up the sleeves and do that thing which she did say. I dedicated my whole self, living with him whom I have loved on earth with my whole soul. Spilling out on these, on these little geographies here within these, within these four walls within this few acres here, shedding all our sweat, blood, and tears, all our efforts, all our great desires, all our aspirations for Christ. These are wonderful times to live in now that we're now entering into communistic uh, times. It's very important that the church, especially her consecrated souls, as darkness descends upon America, we have to get ready and we have to give ourselves totally over to Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Amen.